You can't plan for your periods, what the gush moments. But the right pad can. Only Always Ultra Thins have rapid dry technology and they absorb 40% faster. The gush happens fast. That's why Always absorbs faster. Allie, thanks for helping us out. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. I love Come being on. here. And by the way, she has so many jobs, but don't miss Chronicle Mysteries, Help to Death, Sunday on Hallmark's Movies and Mysteries channel, and streaming now on Disney Plus, Allison Hannick. Happening now. What will the power problems of this week cost us? Why we may be paying for them for more than a decade. An outpouring of support after dozens are displaced when their building goes up in flames right off of TPC Parkway. I'm Devin Clark. We have the latest coming up. Sure felt good to thaw out today, but get ready for another freeze tonight. And we could have some issues on the roadways into tomorrow morning. I'll tell you more about the weekend coming right up. From busted pipes to spoiled food, it is going to be a costly winter storm. Coming up, what you should know about filing an insurance claim. God willing, it will bring a lot of relief to a lot of Texans. And President Joe Biden promising some much needed relief for Texans who are still reeling from this week's winter weather. The relief package he's promising. The News at 5 starts right now. Now that most CPS Energy customers have power back, concern is turning to how much they're going to have to pay for it. The head of CPS saying they're still trying to figure out the cost of trying to supply power through the weather and the outages, but it is going to be, quote, huge. Garrett Berger tells us you, us, the customers, could be shouldering the burden for a decade or more. All right, Garrett, break this down for us, and how is this even possible? Well, Steve, if you take a look at your CPS energy bill, I have mine here, you'll notice that there are lines for fuel adjustment in it. Now, that's how the utility charges you for how much it had to pay for power and fuel. And fuel was not cheap this week. CPS uses natural gas for both heating and electricity generation. And with demand for it high across the state and natural gas wellheads frozen shut from the cold, CPS CEO Paula Gold Williams says she saw prices shoot up as much as 16 thousand percent and what CPS pays up front is eventually paid by us the ratepayers. Normally that rolls into bills over a 45 to 60 day period but Gold Williams says she knows it would be unacceptable to have customers try to bear that cost on their monthly bill. We are working um, diligently the financial services team is working diligently trying to figure out ways to truly spread that cost potentially maybe you know 15 I mean, uh, 10 years or longer to try to make it affordable. We don't have that fully assessed. Now a plan hasn't been finalized, so it is not yet clear how much we're going to have to pay on our bills. For whatever peace of mind it may be worth for you though, CPS officials have stressed that they haven't been disconnecting people since March. Now the CPS board will be meeting on Monday afternoon where we expect they'll be discussing their plans. Live in San Antonio, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. A lot of eyes will be on those plans. Thanks, Garrett. Meanwhile, ERCOT, the Electric Reliability Council of Texas, finally ending those emergency conditions this morning. That means no more rolling outages. Thousands of Texans, though, still without power across the state. That's due to problems like damage to individual power units. ERCOT says if you still don't have power, you should contact your electric provider. Texas lawmakers have already announced plans for an emergency hearing next week to examine what went wrong and ERCOT's role in those outages. Let's talk water now. With snow and ice melting on the roads, hundreds across the city flocking to various distribution sites to bring water back home to their families. The San Antonio Water System opening seven water distribution pump stations for customers today at noon to flocks of San Antonio citizens in need of water. Alicia Barrera visited the Jones Maltzberger Saws location on the city's north side where a lot of people were willing to wait in those long lines. The story of what's led them here varies. Well, our hot water heater broke, one of them. I think uh, Wednesday or Thursday that I had a busted pipe in my garage. We're basically like real low water pressure for about two days and after days without any drip from their faucets and some like Fred Guerrero even resourcing to mother nature to wash dishes. You know, there's no help, but I hadn't had to drink any snow or boiled water to drink any snows. So. Their need for this basic essential has finally been filled this afternoon by SAWS employees. People from all different departments. These are information technology folks 
all hands on deck, we're out there trying to make sure our customers have the water they need. There are seven distribution points and SAWS recommends that customers bring their own containers of either five gallon buckets or water jugs to receive five gallons of water daily until services are fully restored. And remember to bring a lid for it is important because you don't want to slosh it around in the back of your car. Roger Fry and his wife Kathleen may have been third in line at the Jones Maltzberger location today, but their wait for repairs will be much longer. And we're waiting for the plumber to arrive, but there are 12 other people in line to have their repairs done. So we've also posted on our site information and a video on how to turn off your water at the meter. Don't wait for us to come out to turn it off. Don't wait for a plumber. Take care of turning it off right away. Customers say they're eager to get home and boil the water to hydrate or maybe make some coffee and like many others to also wash it all away. We've got a couple of toilets we'd like to flush. That was Alicia Barrera reporting. Now, there was a hiccup with one of those water distribution sites, though, ironically, the most aquatic of them all, SeaWorld. SAW's president and CEO Robert Puente said that attorneys for SeaWorld got involved and held things up with concerns about liability and indemnity. Puente said that SAWS even went to the lengths of trying to get the mayor and the county judge involved here before SeaWorld finally let them set up on their property. Hear more about that coming up on the News at 6. And new at 5, transportation services finally operating again in our city via resuming services this morning. The San Antonio International Airport reopening its doors. Airport officials urging travelers to check their airline directly for any updates or changes to flights. They also say be patient, give yourself extra time for parking and checking in. As for VIA, buses will run on the essential service schedule, but there may be some delays. Any changes will be posted on VIA social media channels and at ViaInfo.net. The San Antonio Food Bank serving up relief for thousands of people who were left hungry in the wake of this week's devastating winter storms. The nonprofit will host seven mega mobile food distributions over the coming days. The first two happening today. Stephen Cavazos with more on how the food bank is helping the community in this hard time. If people need food, we're going to have it for them. It's been a mission for the San Antonio Food Bank for 41 years and a lifeline for others. And Friday morning was proof that work has never been more important. The nonprofit will have seven mega mobile food distribution sites that will be open and operate throughout the weekend. And lines already taking shape here at Gustafson Stadium. This food bank team is a group that runs to the crisis, not from it. The nonprofit hopes to provide 100 pounds of food and water to thousands of people who are still hurting from the cold. We met Bobby Hall, who was the first to get to Gustafson Stadium. He said he had got to the site at 1 in the morning. This is where I'm going to be. I'll be here first thing in the morning. He says food at home is running low and is concerned for his family at an all-time high. Hopefully it will help us until next Friday when I get paid. I'm retired and disabled. But the nonprofit wants people like Hall to know help is on its way. San Antonio police plan to deliver food to the elderly and some of the most vulnerable. Hundreds of other volunteers expected to serve the community during one of its darkest weeks. Hall says it gives him hope there is light at the end. It's not a simple thing. They're braving the elements to be helping us, and I greatly appreciate that. The food bank is asking that people pre-register before arriving to any of these sites. However, they say while supplies last, no one will be turned away. And if you miss today's distribution, don't worry. This will not stop here. This will actually continue throughout the weekend. You can head over to our website at ksat.com for a full list of distribution sites. Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Meantime, the San Antonio Diaper Bank hosting a drive through distribution event tomorrow to help families who need baby supplies after this winter storm. The event will be located at the nonprofit's office. That's at 1803 Grand Stand Drive, Suite 150. It will start at 10 a.m. tomorrow, last until noon or as long as the supplies last. The Diaper Bank will be distributing diapers, wipes, blankets, socks, a lot of other important baby items. You can get more information on this event also at KSAT.com. President Joe Biden announcing today he will be sending extra relief to Texas to help the state recover from winter weather damage. The president says FEMA has already been sent to the Lone Star State and has been providing support with generators, diesel fuel and other supplies to those who need it. However, he says this is just the beginning, saying he has also asked the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Defense and many others to identify other resources 
to help the state recover. Red, there's no red or blue. It's all about commitment that the American people make to one another. And so we're going to sign that declaration once it's in front of me. And God willing, it will bring a lot of relief to a lot of Texans. President Biden said he will visit Texas and sign a major disaster declaration soon, but it's not yet said when. Oh, isn't that a beautiful sight outside? Sunshine. Let's just savor this for a little while. Look at that. Look at the traffic moving on the roadways on 410 there. Even the bridges and overpasses are open because of the sun just warming up that ground. We made it well into the 50s today that melted all the snow and really dried up the roadways as well. 44 currently Del Rio, 48 in Lakey, as Joanne called in and said, Feels like a heat wave up here now, all things considered, right? Now, Brennan Rock Springs, 48 degrees. She is still without power, and many folks there are still without power, and some without water as well. So we're thinking of the folks in the Hill Country as well. I know you've really been struggling through this. 51 right now in Floresville, and you look locally, and for the most part, 40s to right around 50 degrees, even Myco at 51. As we go through the evening, temperatures falling off, another freeze with temperatures in the 20s tomorrow morning, and we could have some issues on the roadways I'm going to talk about coming up. Thanks, Adam. We're seeing a huge outpouring of community support after a building in the north side burned to the ground, leaving dozens of people homeless. Several vehicles destroyed as well. Now thousands of donations being delivered to a local store where the owners are facilitating the efforts along with generous volunteers. That's where we find Devin Clark, who is live to give us a look at the outpouring out there, Devin. <laughs> Absolutely, Steve and Myra, that burning building on TPC Parkway was the scene of so much pain and loss. Well, just a few miles away here where we are, this is a very different scene, one of hope and love. Take a look. This is not the only place right next door. The Pure Pa Shalom hosting this donation drive, also filled with donations. And within the past few hours, this once vacant store that we're in, has also been transformed into a donation center filled with necessary items like toiletries, clothes. I even saw pots and pans and a refrigerator. Now these are items that we know will go a long way since a building in the Cortland View at TPC apartment complex collapsed amid raging flames that also spread to vehicles parked below. We know that about 50 to 60 people have been left without a home and some 130 units have been either damaged or destroyed. Now, fortunately, so far, no known injuries and the cause of the fire is still being investigated. But in the meantime, people like Russ Latham, who is co-owner of the Pure Pa Salon, they're opening doors to help fire victims like Stephen and Joanne Henshaw. What people need now, uh, what you'd wake up in the morning and do, you need soap, you need shampoo, you need clothing. These people need clothing now. They've lost everything. Our neighbor across the way smelled an electrical fire and called 911 and then asked us to verify the smell. We're like, yeah, we smell something too. Well, it's heartbreaking, right? Because like you said, we weren't expecting to see that. <laughs> And the operation's actually wrapping up here today, but anyone hoping to either donate or receive donations can come here to the Pure Posh Salon and the vacant store that's been transformed into this donation center next door tomorrow between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Also, as you can see, the donation's very plentiful, so volunteers also much appreciated. For now reporting live in Stone Oak, Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. So many neighbors stepping up for each other this that, week. That was great to see. Yeah, huge outpouring. Thanks, Devin. Still ahead, from damaged roofs to busted pipes, all this winter weather has homeowners wondering, will my insurance cover this? Hope on your side's Marilyn Morix right after this. So nice to see the sun out today, but a break in the freeze doesn't mean our problems have ended. The effects of the last week will be costly ones. Insured losses are expected to be in the billions of dollars. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moore. It's on what typical homeowners policies cover and what you should do before you file a claim. So all the, all the water is under the house. We've barely begun to thaw and Jacob has a mess of water underneath his house. Busted water pipes. 
it appears to be that it's, it's going to be a, a bigger project than what we were hoping it was going to be to get us some water again. He may be filing an insurance claim. Already, USAA alone has been flooded with 38,000 winter storm claims, most for frozen and busted pipes. So what's typically covered? The homeowner policy does cover the ensuing water damage and uh, it will also most of the time cover the frozen pipes in these situations that burst. Of course, coverage and limits can vary depending on individual policies and carriers. USAA's Elizabeth Gulick suggests homeowners inspect their plumbing. Look under cabinets where the sinks are. Look around the tub and the toilets. Look up in the ceiling. And if you see or hear a problem, locate your main water cutoff valve so you can cut the water. And something else you can file a claim for, spoiled food from the power outages. And with the food, the deductible probably does not apply. If you do have damage, she says document, take pictures, video, keep receipts for any related expenses, and contact your insurer to understand your coverage and file a claim as soon as possible. When it comes to hiring a plumber, ask for a plumbing license, you know, ask them for their plumbing license. Beware and don't give no money up front. And be patient. I'm hoping that we're going to be able to have some water restored by Tuesday. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. By the way, I also want to mention that we'll be talking to SAW's CEO and President Robert Puente coming up at 630, and we can ask him some of those questions about when water will be restored to everyone. You bet. He's at Q&A on the way. Yeah. yeah. It was so nice to see a warm-up today. 47 doesn't even feel like you need a heavy coat I know, right? this week, right? It's fun, funny how you acclimate to the conditions and how your body adjusts and how it all. My family just got used to the thermostat being set in the low to mid-60s, and now it's normal to them, right? And you are happy about that. I love it. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> it's so much easier to sleep at night. So another freeze tonight. Fog developing later tonight, and it could cause some slick spots in the morning. 60s by Sunday. Yes, you heard that right. Take a look outside. I just love this because the traffic moving along on 410 there, bridges and overpasses, and even the underpasses, which remained shaded and iced over for the past several days, have thawed out. 46 degrees, dew point of 26. Temperatures across the state, 50s out west, 40s and even upper 30s in North Texas. It feels so odd to me to be talking about this as if, wow, it's so much warmer out. Look at this, look at this great news, but it is, we're above freezing. That's the good thing. 43 Junction, 49 Kerrville, 46 Carrizo Springs, a lot of locations still not reporting because of power issues and communications disruptions. That's why we don't have some temperatures on the map. Tonight, widespread 20s, even as low as 20 in Hondo, 22 Kerrville, Del Rio about 25, and locally, I think most of us will be in the low to mid 20s. 22 Timberwood Park, Elmendorf 24, and Castorville at 22 tomorrow morning. Stone Oak about 23. So another hard freeze. And I do think we're going to have some fog to go with those freezing temperatures. After midnight, notice 2 a.m., a little bit of fog starts to develop. Not everywhere, but where it does develop, it can become problematic because through about 9, 10 a.m., some of that fog could freeze onto bridges and overpasses. So it's going to reduce visibility like fog normally would, but it's also going to act as freezing drizzle like we had a few nights ago, and that could cause some slick spots, particularly on the bridges and overpasses. By 9, 10 a.m., it should all be okay. It's just for some early morning, late night and early morning travel. This is interesting. Visible satellite shows the wide swath of snow that fell yesterday and how it gradually melted through the day with the exception of northern Mexico and parts of Valverde County where it's still detectable by the visible satellite imagery. So it's nice. To, it's interesting to be able to see that and the strength of the south Texas sun really goes a long way in terms of drying up the roadways and melting that snow. A few slick spots in the morning at 26, then 56 and sunny by the afternoon. So even warmer than today by 10 degrees, just as sunny in a south wind at 5 to 10. We get into Sunday. I'm thinking dense fog, but regular fog at this point. So just normal fog as we get into Sunday, 64 degrees, the high temperature, and we'll stay in the 60s as we get into early next week. By the way, Del Rio this morning, 11 for the low. That was one degree warmer than their all time coldest reading wow. on record. They, they come this far and they missed it by a degree. Unbelievable. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. All right. Among those people who are happy that the San Antonio International Airport is back open, yep. the San Antonio Spurs. Saw their charter flight approaching right over the top of my house. And I, I could actually hear the screams. They're <laughs> glad to be home. From Simmons Mansion.
Exactly, from the Simmons <laughs> mansion. Very small mansion. When we come back, Spurs finally home after the trials and tribulations of being quarantined in Charlotte and DeMar's tribute to his father. Coming up. The San Antonio Spurs have finally arrived back home, touching down shortly before 2 this afternoon. After two previous unsuccessful attempts to get back home, they're being quarantined in Charlotte for the past five days. They tried twice before on Wednesday, then again on Thursday with a weather emergency here in San Antonio, turning them away both times with the San Antonio International Airport overwhelmed with extreme icing and snow conditions due to the lack of equipment, which is normal in this part of the country. That's after four members of the Spurs had tested positive for the coronavirus, following the Spurs' 122 to 110 victory over the Hornets on Sunday night to go 2-0 on the rodeo road trip, but due to the NBA's health and safety protocols, the Spurs' next four games are postponed. Tuesday night against Detroit, Wednesday night against Cleveland, tomorrow's game against New York, and Monday's game at Indiana. As a result, the Spurs decided to fly home to wait to head out on their only game they have left on the rodeo road trip schedule, and that's Wednesday night in Oklahoma City. That game right now is scheduled to tip off at 7 on Wednesday night. Our thoughts and prayers are with DeMar DeRose and his family today after the Spurs player announced this passing of his father, Frank. Following a prolonged illness, DeMar had left the team back in January to tend to his ill father, only to have to pay tribute to him today while in quarantine. DeMar DeRozan's tributes to his father's Frank says, words won't serve justice to what you meant to me. Never missed a game of practice and an opportunity to show me what a great father was. You pushed me my whole life to be able to understand and withstand the roughest of times. Never seen you complain or fold. All I cared about was making you proud. Over the past three years, I've seen you display the ultimate measure of a man fighting to the end. Wish I could tell you thank you one last time rest well big dog love you dad the nba has finally announced there will be an all-star game in atlanta on march the 7th but for players and guests only no fans it'll be one night event featuring the skills competition three-point shooting contest all-star game and slam dunk contest at halftime nba commissioner adam silver defending his decision to hold an all-star event during the pandemic we're all collectively more concerned about the players leaving our daily protocols and what happens on break where of course, people, guys want to let loose a little bit. And it's those activities that could more likely lead to guys, all-stars or non-all-stars, getting infected, as opposed to being in a tightly constricted bubble in Atlanta. Well, good news for the San Antonio Rodeo. It resumes tonight. The last four nights had to be postponed. It resumes starting at 7 tonight. They'll have a double header, so to speak, on tomorrow and Sunday to make up for some of the postponements. Then on Monday, back to the regular schedule, along with Tuesday, both at 7 p.m. So everybody getting back to that kind of feel of normalcy right now. Finally. Yes, finally. At least as far as the temperatures are concerned. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> Driving is a lot easier today, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Greg. Sure. We'll be right back. All right, I was just looking at the numbers and with all that wintry weather and all the snow, which looks like a lot of moisture outside, it's only going to equate to just over a third of an inch of liquid. OK, so it's, it helps our drought situation, but not a drought buster. We'll have some fog tonight and early tomorrow. Some of that could freeze on some elevated surfaces. So beware traveling in the morning, bridges, overpasses, you know the drill. We just have to get to about 9, 10 a.m. tomorrow and it should be OK. Sunny and 56, but down in the 20s again to start your weekend, then we really thaw out. Thanks so much for watching the News at 5. See you back here at 6.